Goku here for some more sweet legacy action. Today's stream is brought to you by Zad? XAD is their, uh, their handle that they go by. And we are going to be playing Breach in game one, Show and Tell in game two, and then who knows what in game three. So here's the idea of this deck list. So somebody came up with the idea that there are these packages that you can play that are mostly held together by the same stuff. Petals, veils, like 12-ish cantrips, intuition, force of will. So someone came up with a sweet idea. Hey, what if we do like a 15 for 15? So what if we board out like Brain Freeze, Thassa's Oracle, Grape Shot, Underworld Breach, uh, Lion's Eye Diamonds, and probably Lightning Bolt, and we can go 15 for 15 and switch from being a graveyard-focused combo deck to a sort of like hand-based combo deck and totally switch around what we're doing with minimal impact elsewhere. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so this is a, a strange deck list. I don't know that this is better than traditional Breach, but when everyone else is expecting, like, mentors to come in from sideboards and they're boarding in, like, their, their ley lines and their canonists and their deafening silences and craft digger cages, and you just go, like, land, land, lotus petal, show and tell, omni, emrakul. That definitely has the just, like, get em element to it. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing how that, uh, that plays out. We've got a, got a weird one. Let's see what we can do with it. Um, at this point, I assume that everyone knows how Breach works, and I assume everyone knows how Show and Tell works. Um, I will say this is sort of like a rug Breach deck, so instead of the Orem's Chants that you might be used to seeing, we do have Veil of Summers here instead. Um, so... Like, we're a little different from normal traditional Breach, and we still have the Thassa's Oracle, which has uh, sort of fallen out of favor now. <laughs> Legacy League. Let's do it. See if we can get Trophy 5 tonight. Hope you all are doing well today. Um, we recorded the next episode of Eternal Glory last night, uh, so that's been shipped off to our editor now. We're hoping to have that drop on Friday, um, you know, just kind of up to uh, our editor at this point. It was a lot of fun. I think we have a pretty good crew assembled, so you can look forward to listening to that. I'll make sure to get that linked on my website as well. I'm, in fact, going to write myself a note to do that. Do, 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 do. Link. Eternal glory. Spent a decent amount of time between Friday and today working on a DNT article. Uh, Dr. Bill, thank you very much for your continued support. Uh, very much appreciated. Um, and on the note of subs, the sub goal for today is uh, pushing out that article that uh, I, I wrote. I don't think we get to throw back hands that look like this. So we're looking for Breach and Brain Freeze. I do think that Veil is probably pretty good. I'm going to bottom the Bolt. And I'll top the Veil and keep that. So, for anyone who's been sort of only partially keeping an eye on Legacy and uh, the community. Why do I have different brainstorms? All right, well. Hmm. 
Uh, we're gonna cast this. For, we're gonna cast this brainstorm. Well, um, this is too many force of wills. But by how many is it too many force of wills? I think I'm just gonna have Veil and Double Force open in case our opponent is a Breach deck, um, which it they may actually just be. Uh, yeah, the deck is definitely a weird one. Day's going pretty well. Got an article good to go. Am I just redrawing this land that's on top of my library? I think I'm redrawing this land that's on top of my library. So my opponent could be, be Breach or Miracles. Feels like Miracles. Eh. I think we're just going to take some new cards there. Ah, oh, great. More Force of Will. Uh, Cletus, thank you very much for your Twitch Prime support. I really do appreciate it. You know, we've been streaming five minutes and we have two subs already. Uh, very, very, very much appreciated. Yeah. I'm not pleased. I have another problem in that I'm not sure how many green sources I actually have, and I'm kind of afraid that it's two. Two drops, one snow-covered forest. All right. So I did not cut myself off of green by just passing the turn. That's good. Oh, Cletus, and thank you very much for gifting another sub as well. Um, we have hit our donation goal already, so I will make sure that after this stream, my article goes live immediately. So, I don't necessarily have it yet, but I should be real close. I'm just going to pass the turn here. <coughs> I was about to say I'm under zero pressure, so I have no reason to actually attempt to combo off. I'm fine with letting that resolve. You write preach on the title and subs just come up. Well, if you like talking about breach, you're going to enjoy the Eternal Glory podcast. Um, that'll be coming out later this week. And you'll also enjoy the article that I'll be uh, pushing out today. Senor Yes, you say. Are we fighting? Feels like we're fighting. That card's real good. This is maybe a little foolish on my end.
are we doing a bait bail this turn? Feels like yes. I gotta have a counter spell over there. So I don't have a deterministic kill if I actually just try to resolve this breach here. So I'll put two veils in to the graveyard if I fight over this. There'll be three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten cards in graveyard. But some of those are going to be things that I'm actually just trying to cast. I have LEDs too. I think I, I think I do do this. Oh, wow. Double force of will. <clears throat> it's a real talk. Do I still just like go for it? So now I can just play breach, double LED. There's 10 cards in my graveyard. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. So let's start casting ponders. Get rid of force, land, land with this one. Done. Uh, there's a brain freeze. Target me. Pay one. Brain freeze. All right, and we won the game. How's it going? Um, how's, how's it look like it's going? It's, it's going fine. <coughs> yeah, all right. So, now, we have to make a decision. Are we playing Breach? Or are we playing Show and Tell? <clears throat> yeah, if it was a post-sideboard game, I'd probably do that, but I already had six mana floating. So I feel like I'm pretty good there in, in that regard, right? I don't know if I'm supposed to play Breach or Show and Tell versus Miracles. Hey James, welcome. Uh, nice to see you putting up some results with Delver, by the way. Oh yeah, we're uh, we're definitely the bad guys today. So I think I think that the breach plan is better, but this deck has one job, right? And this deck's one job is to meme the ever-loving crap out of people. So let's let's go for it. <clears throat> yeah. I don't know. I just kind of think that, like, Brain Freeze is pretty good against Miracles. Just, like, full stop. All right. Where are my lands at? There they are. Uh, dark Sorcery is right. Do I want two of these? I only kind of want the Omniscience.
If I'm being honest, I'd rather just find an Amrakul or a Grizzlebrand to put in than an Omniscience, because this requires another piece. I think I'm just going to shuffle this. <clears throat> so find an Andy. Our opponent might have some things in right now that interact with like the graveyard or something like that that might be uh, dead cards. Not 100% sure. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. So I like all of this stuff. I might intuition for a counterspell or something instead of just jamming next turn. So I think I'm going to put back two lands. Play this, fetch, and preordain. Ah, drop. Um, I definitely don't want intuition. Ponder is interesting. If I keep ponder, I can intuition for force, force, force. And that gives me some options. So I think I will go ahead and top that and draw it. <clears throat> oh no! Not the null rod! Oh no! I think I'm an intuition now. Just do it while they're tapped out. Well, see, we're breach in game one, and then we're show and tell in game two. And then who knows what we are in game three. I feel like I have picked three Force of Wills, but... Okay, there we go. <clears throat> I mean, that's slightly awkward, but okay. Opponent's also going to see what's up now. We're going to give the uh, opponent a nice smiley face in chat. They have not responded to my smiley face. Ah, Goblin Lackey. Welcome. I have no idea how weird that league I played was. Um, it's going to be the daily DNT uh, set for next week. Uh, I think I wait until I can Veil of Summer. And all I need for that is any land. Oh god, this is so good. Holy crap.
yeah, those, uh, those were indeed rough draws. Alright, so we cast a Veil of Summer. If it resolves, we're good. If it doesn't resolve, we try again next turn. Yeah, I, I think I'm just fine with letting that occur. Yeah, so the daily DNT set for next week is real weird. I, I'm essentially playing White Weenie next week. Wow. Uh, so that means... No, that doesn't actually matter, right? Like, I still just cast Veil of Summer at sorcery speed. And then follow up with show and tell. Yeah, so that's that's still 100% fine. I do want to fetch away the top card of my library here, though. And I'm pretty sure if they counter this, I just jam anyway. Yeah, like they have two cards. It has to be a, a, a third force effect and another blue card. We're going. I pick Amrakul. Hmm. So what do you think? Oh god, I was I was supposed to pick omniscience. Yeah, that was indeed just wrong. I got so excited about the fact that I won the game that uh I've clicked on the wrong card. So that's a hundred percent me. Alright, so I, I punted this game. That's on me. Two, three, four, five, six. No worries, we'll win anyway. Somehow. Uh, but 100% an error on my part. Like, I had a deterministic kill there. Their opponent fetches, puts Force of Will on top of their library. Brainstorms, gets Force of Will with JC. My bad. It's okay. You all came here for magic, right? So. I mean, hopefully I just win this one anyway through my egregious error. We don't have to think about that. Well, there's a lot of planeswalkers. Alright, so opponent has fluster and force. And three Planeswalkers. That is, uh... That is not bad. Womp womp. Liter literal coin flip to see which plan we go with. So my opponent has Teferi as an out to Amrakul. 
So that's something I'm going to have to keep in mind. All right, nurse it. Whoops. Right, yeah, so I won that game if I wasn't an idiot. But I was an idiot. So we deserve to lose that one. So we have Teferi balance and Jace balance as the argument for why I should not be playing this. But then we have Null Rod as the reason why I should not be playing this. I think just like naturally brain freezing our opponent a couple of times. is probably fine. So I'm probably intending on putting back these Lotus Petals with this Brainstorm in another turn or two. Oh, hello! Well, the bolts are just really good. Like, the bolts are in alternate win condition. That allow you to beat a lot of things and also remove some hate cards mid-combo. So I probably put back just one of the pedals now. Do I win? Pedal. Feels like I win. I put back Force, Ponder, Cast Breach. Have pedal. No, I don't have enough cards in graveyard. But I probably get there next turn. So let's put back bolt and packed and be okay with like redrawing all of these things. No, maybe I should. Oh, whatever. That was the wrong line. I was I was supposed to not hide that. And well, this is gonna work out pretty well instead, I guess. So now I can put one, two, three, six cards into graveyard. Three of these returns a petal. Well, I guess I just like play petal, petal, see if breach resolves. If breach doesn't resolve, I can just cast a somewhat small brain freeze. I could also just try to find a Veil this turn and wait. Let's ponder and see what happens. This I don't hate. 
Because I can just cast a decent sized brain freeze targeting either me or my opponent. And then do the same thing again later. So Storm is 1, 2, 3, 4, Brain Freeze for 12. Yeah, that's fine. So the interesting thing about this is that now casting the Breach, because we have the Brain Freeze in the yard, is now much more threatening. Um, so opponent is playing back to basics. I don't know that they'll have more than one, but it's something to think about. Okay, <clears throat> so I can cast Breach, exile three cards to cast a petal, Brain Freeze myself with three more cards. So one, two, three, cast, one, two, exile one of the two Lotus Petals, cast. Yeah, so that, that works and then I can go off from there. I'm fine with that. An intuition on my opponent's turn for something. Not sure what I want. I'm not sure that I want to get like breach, breach, breach. Hmm. So that's annoying. So because I'm not playing traditional breach, I actually don't have answers to Null Rod. So now I just need to mill my opponent out naturally, or grape shot them naturally. So I think I'm just going to take like preordain, preordain, preordain here and just convert it into a normal cantrip. And I don't think I'm going to cast anything yet. I really just want to make a few land drops and then cast like five spells followed by a brain freeze. I've taken out two of my opponent's win conditions. I milled a Teferi and a Jace. I also need to keep in mind that if my opponent churns through cantrips on their turn, I can just do a brain freeze on their turn.
Surgical extraction targeting preordain. Okay. I personally would have picked brain freeze. But that's fine. <clears throat> so this is probably a turn where I just accept the next smallish brain freeze. <coughs> Just send the wind conditions away. So there's one copy on number two, one copy on number three, one copy on number four, one copy on number one. Two copies on number one. So I need to pay for one of the ones other than number one. So, yes, I will pay for that one. That was not great for me. I have two more brain freezes to draw naturally, though. Uh, I'm not going to cantrip this turn. I think I'll cantrip next turn, though. I guess since there's a Narset still in my opponent's deck, I should consider using my cantrips as soon as I draw them. Um, now I'll save that for Force of Will. Important targeting me. That's fine. So I kind of want to fetch and then ponder this turn, but I don't think I'm going to. <clears throat> I think I'm going to fetch at my opponent's end step. Eh, no? Alright, our brain freeze has been surgically extracted. So now we are off to grape shot our opponent for 12. Which is probably going to be in the form of two grape shots rather than one grape shot. My cantrips get considerably worse, and my opponent finds a way to dig for an actual win condition. Alright, Disenchant does not do a lot. Pierce does not do a lot. My opponent has eight cards left in library, and they have found a counterspell and a potential win condition, but I'll just grape shot that away. Portent targeting me, so I'll probably just fetch with Scalding Tarn. Um, that's unfortunate, that is resolving. Yep.
You're a little late, friend. <clears throat> so I'm going to look to cast a couple of spells and then grape shot both the Narset and the Snapcaster at the same time. Again, I don't need to kill my opponent. I just need to not die before they deck. So really, I just want to draw like some pieces of like artifact mana or something like that. So I think I will go for something, I think I'll go for an intuition on my opponent's end step, and then go from there. I don't know, I was probably talking about something and BSing. There's a zero on top. Uh, Lightning Bolt is also pretty interesting. Breach is also pretty interesting. But I can just draw a Breach naturally at some point. I'm going to take a Veil of Summer. I thought I had clicked on enough Veil of Summers. has six cards left in library and there's a snow covered plane on top. You are going to cast a force of will, are you? I think I force back. And really, I actually just care about building my storm count here. So storm count is currently three, four, five with grape shot. So that gets countered. All right, can't be countered. All right, uh, so we'll grape shot, target Narset, pay red and one. We'll use one of these for Snapcaster, then the rest go at my opponent. So now we can either deck our opponent or draw a breach and combo our opponent off. Although actually I think just because of my clock I just uh, F6 my turns. Not anymore, they have a Snapcaster. Which just targets a fluster storm while I'm held back. Ooh, this wasn't gonna be close.
Um, opponent, I don't know that you can afford to be fetching things out of your deck. Like, right, as of right now, you're winning the game with no library. Okay, I've got a couple more of those to draw. And all I need to do is bolt the Snapcaster. I don't actually have to combo my opponent off. So I need to draw another Breach here or something that removes the Snapcaster. No! Opponent, please cantrip. Rats. So close. GG's. Alright, uh, so I punted that one away in game two, like, 100% had the win on board and just clicked the wrong card. Uh, so that's, that's on me. I, I did a dumb. But we got to see that cool game, so... Not really a loss. I mean, scoreboard says so, but I don't feel bad about it. Um, hand can't be that bad. Uh, so we're probably playing against like Steel Stompy. In which case, I should consider playing out this Lotus Petal this turn. <clears throat> For Thorn reasons. Okay, so we're playing against Death in Texas. So I really just need to fill up my yard. So I want this to get... <coughs> well, I guess I can choose whether or not I actually want to play around Wasteland this game. I don't really need to fire off this brainstorm yet, so I'm not I'm not gonna do anything yet. I'm just gonna take my sweet time here. And like next upkeep, maybe I'll fetch another basic land brainstorm or something. Alright, there's my answer to that question. So this Veil of Summer doesn't really matter. I'm just going to get another Island and Brainstorm. So I'm going to put back Thassa's Oracle and Veil of Summer. And just fetch those away. I'll get a Mountain with this. Fort Resolves, take a fresh draw. It's unfortunately a Veil of Summer that I don't really want. Uh, what's my basic configuration like? I have four basics total. So this doesn't get me my basic forest. So I can just choose to ponder this turn and lose a land, or I can just play Scalding Tarn Pass. I would like to find LED. LED just lets me combo off through Thalia with, like, absolutely no thought to it.
I might just like naturally brain freeze myself at some point just to like try and find the LED and then combo off. I punted, but it resulted in a sweet game. That's not losing, right? Right? No, I, I obviously punted the game away. Um, if I'm willing to take a whole nother turn, Intuition finds LED. But if I get Wastelanded and then my opponent ports me, I have to give up a Lotus Petal to cast that in my upkeep. I guess that's fine. It's just awkward if I get revoked. No, I don't think we're going to get anything banned next week in Legacy. I think they're going to let Breach run around for a bit longer. LED, LED, LED. And we click on another LED again. I think by wizard's standards, it's too soon. As someone deeply entrenched in legacy, wouldn't, wouldn't mind if it went. I don't think it's going to go yet, but I wouldn't hate it if it did. Ren was not too soon. That card was terribly warping. Um, Breach is probably even more warping than Ren and Six was. All right. Blue, blue, blue. Cast LED. Pay one. Land, land, land. Done. Blue, blue, blue. Pay one. Chunk one. Yeah, all right. They've seen the writing on the wall. <coughs> Um, so the article that I'm pushing out tonight, because we already hit the sub goal, is going to talk about this matchup a little bit um, in part of the article. Um, as you can see, like my opponent had the best hate bear in their deck in game one in play, and it did not matter. They lost anyway. So, um, I don't think we want to deal with Deafening Silence. And the other random hate cards that my opponent is going to bring in. Um, I think we're just going to beat them the good old-fashioned way here. Um, our boarding is probably going to be a little interesting, though. So, like, we probably board out the Breaches, the Oracles, the LEDs. And then normally we board out Brain Freezes and Grape Shots. But Veil of Summer has no text in this matchup. So we should board out these instead. We'll leave in a Grape Shot as a removal spell for creatures. And we'll leave in Brain Freeze as a blue card for Force of Will. No, I think... Uh, being a blue card is better than, like, maybe doing something against a surgical that they might have. 
The other thing I can do is just play two breaches, just as something that can replay cantrips and lightning bolts. That actually might be better than brain freeze. I would buy that argument. <coughs> so we probably don't want to just show and tell in a creature. We want to show and tell in omniscience whenever possible. All right, I don't think I can throw back this hand. Assuming we draw a land, we just get to like YOLO turn to Emrakul, and that's totally fine. One hundred percent good with yellowing turn to Emrakul. I will probably even brainstorm at my opponent's end step if they tap out. Um, so I'm going to brainstorm in response to that and plan out my turn. So I'll put back breach. And a Grizzle Brand. And I'm missing land drops here. So we're going to force that. Hope they don't notice that's a show and tell. It's alright, we have the wind in hand. The win in hand, and all we need is mana. That's unfortunate. It is what it is. So we draw breach this turn. And then we get a fresh draw next turn. We need two lands. That sucks. That just goes on Lotus Petal. So now I need probably four lands. That's no good. We were pretty unlikely to miss with that Brainstorm or the cards that followed. That's... That's actually okay. That's problematic. If I miss on a land again, I will just concede. Uh, so Grape Shot is the thing that gets me back into this game. I Grape Shot either one or two creatures and go from there. So I guess if they can port down both of these lands, though, I don't get there. But I guess it's like, gotta make them do it, right? So three, six, seven, eight. So I'm discarding something now. <coughs> Can upkeep brainstorm be at four. All right, let's go ahead and concede. So because we're not a normal breach deck, I actually don't have answers to any like enchantments that my opponent puts in play. So if my opponent is playing deafening silence, then I can't actually answer that card. So I don't think I can play the Breach deck again. I think I have to play the Show and Tell deck again, which I think is very good. 
against death and taxes. Like, it's very hard for them to beat omniscience. But I'm going to sit here for a little bit, like I'm swapping out my sideboard, like kind of make them think about it. That's probably enough time. Uh, so all I have to do is find a show and tell. I have a cantrip to start things off. I have something that will let me do that. I think this is fine. So like show and tell and lands are what I'm looking for off of this. <coughs> Bottom that, top that, play a lotus petal, pass. Sure. Um, so this is an interesting turn. I could use the lotus petal to just intuition for show and tell, and then try to spike the land off the top. Or I can just like preordain. I think I'm going to intuition because it becomes harder to intuition in future turns if my opponent like casts a Thalia or something. Whereas it's still easy to preordain. Yeah, I punted away our previous round, though. So, like, we won if I was a reasonable human being. Unfortunately, I was not. Alright, so we have Show and Tell, Omniscience, Emrakul, cool, um, which should be just about anything our opponent has. We just need to spike our next land. Port's annoying, yeah, there we go. That's a Sanctum Prelate on three. That also sucks for me. I have exactly one Lightning Bolt to answer that. This means I can't force. So if my opponent has the prelate on three and they get to put it in off their vial, I probably lose. Interesting. Um, did I play a land that turn? I don't know if I would play this out anyway. Because, like, this forces them to port. Oh, wow, they're just going in. Alright, so... We see if they have basically Leon and Relic Order. Flicker Wisp does some things. Okay, rest in peace. Okay. All right. I mean, that sucks. That's what they had to have. Yep, all right. <coughs> I 
I just want to point out that most deck lists don't actually have Leon and Relic Order anymore. So, my current thoughts on this deck are that this deck is just worse than traditional Breach. Like, one of the things that make Breach good is all of the white cards in the sideboard. <clears throat> and the fact that, like, Swords of Plowshare, Serenity, Wear, Tear basically answer everything that you possibly care about. And if you can't answer everything you care about, you just have the Mentor package. So... Doing this sort of thing has definitely led to our opponents having a bunch of, like, terrible cards against us. But I basically have to play the show-and-tell plan for the post-sideboard games in a lot of cases because I can't actually beat hate cards. I'm lacking the, the wear tears, the swords, the plowshares, the things that answer the cards that often beat me. So I don't know that this plan is actually good. It's interesting. It's fun. And, like, we should be one and one but I, you know, I misclicked. I, I did a dumb. <coughs> I also think we are on very, very much the wrong side of variance to lose that match. Like, we, we whiffed on the Brainstorm, then we whiffed on lands for just tons and tons of turns in Game 2. And then in game three, they had to have Relic Warder. Uh, very specifically, Relic Warder. Because, like, the Flicker Wisp. No, I guess, I guess Flicker Wisp would have done it, too. Uh... That's a weird one. So, any cantrip is good. And I'm on the draw? I'm on the draw. So, like, we if we find cantrips, we just work towards going off on turn three with Veil back up. I don't know about this hand. Just putting in the Emrakul opens me up to Caracas, Palace Jailer, uh, Flicker Wisp off of Vile. I think that opens me up to too many things where I just die. My opponent also has enough permanence where, like, I might just die if I attack and I keep Thalia in Sword. Alright, so we're going to have time with this hand. We're probably playing against some sort of Oko control deck. <coughs> that has a lot of brain freezes. My opponent has an anemic clock in play.
I potentially just, like, if my opponent, like, cantrips, like, twice in a turn, I think I just go, like, Veil of Summer, Brain Freeze you. Do I just start? I don't think I just start. Hey. That looks pretty good. That just gets a breach. Um, fine and Andy, do you want to try uh, Intuition, Crack LED, go off into your Miracles opponent's six cards? I do not. That sounds scary to me. Oh, I had the Mana to Veil first. Uh, in which case I did not do the math. But it's fun. It's like my specialty is figuring out, like, how I win and how I lose. Cast Force of Negation. To that I say, Cast Veil. Um, it's also possible that I should have just like led on the breach this turn and then responded so that I effectively have one more counter spell. Yeah. It's okay. Opponent has one card. I think I still just win. Nice. So the thing I have to decide, once again, is whether or not, like, we just want to stay on the brain freezy plan, or if I want to pivot into show and tell. I think we do the same thing as before, where we pivot for game two, and if there's a game three, I switch back.
The only reason I lost last time around is because I was dumb. Yeah, the whole self-fulfilling prophecy thing is uh, definitely kind of a bitch. Yeah, we have, we have played a spicy deck for a reason. For the lulls. What's coming up next? I haven't looked ahead to the rest of this week yet. That's a question for later. Keep. Keep. I could start playing around back to basics from turn one here. I don't know that I'm going to do that, though. Um, bottom omniscience, top veil of summer. I wouldn't use a Veil of Summer to protect this. Bottom that, top that. Sorry about that. Um, 100% want to take both of these. Current plan is probably to attempt to go off on turn four. So I can go off on turn four with Veil and Force back up. Yeah, this is fine. It's obviously very good, but it's not the end of the world. Fairy. Oh man, tap out for that. It'll be fine. So current plan is still intuition for force of will. One is going to have seven cards, so it's definitely scary. That's awkward, because now I can't veil into show and tell. So I just have to, like, go for it. What do I do about that? Nothing, because I don't have answers to things. I guess I have to just, like, force of will that. <laughs> I 
Ah, uh, that's annoying. Yeah, intuition targets. So do I just have to put them to the force of will check test right now? And if show and tell doesn't work, I just like drawn from dream, signed another show and tell. I believe that is correct to do. Son of a gun. Sure would be great if I could cast another spell. <coughs> Can't cast fail. If your backup combo is bad against deafening silence, then why do you bother with this backup combo at all? We're not actually bad against deafening silence, right? Like, not really. It's more that, like, Deafening Silence plus Narset plus Counter Spells all working together does some interesting things. Um, so I could Veil here. This is, I can only draw one card each turn. I guess I can just like cycle this into a different card. Nice. All right, so they just had spell pierce last time. What do you have this time? <sighs> Drawn from Dreams digs pretty deep, though. Like, we get seven looks at one of the two remaining copies of Show and Tell. That's not that bad. And the other reason why I'm playing this backup plan is because someone paid me $12 to do it. This isn't my poor decision making. This is someone else's poor decision making. There's a difference. Notably, this is not card draw. This just puts them into my hand. Okay, uh, so we will obviously take the show and tell, and then this is an instant speed draw card on my opponent's turn, so we'll take that as our second thing. I wish I could just go off on instant speed. My opponent ponders and I just do something cool. All right, to fairy. All right, 
Yet again, I'm asking you, show me an answer to this show and tell. But please don't. I just want to cast Emrakul. So this is a this is a pretty miserable combination. So I have one more show and tell. No, there's only two in graveyard. Thought that was the third show and tell that I cast, but I guess I'm wrong. What do you mean? When we cast Emrakul, we get an extra turn. Opponent's at 15. Oh, Exile Zone with Force of Negation. I see. I clicked on my opponent's Exile Zone, not my Exile Zone. Show and Tell Omniscience, Omni Omniscience cast Emrakul. Um, you can't cast more than one non-creature spell each turn. See, like, our opponent is very dead if I resolve a show-and-tell. Let's scry. Yeah, I don't like how little agency I have in my games. So, like, my opponent brings in anti-combo hate for breach. And when they have other things that are also interacting, like, multiple piece, pieces of anti-combo card. Let me start over. Multiple interactive pieces that do things against combo decks are probably going to do some things that stop me. So, like, while I'm dodging some degree of traditional hate, I don't know that I'm dodging enough that this is, like, better than Breach. I can definitely just feel like we have a clunker. Alright, um, math time. So I have one show and tell in 23 cards, or I can make it three show and tells in more cards. So it's a 1 in 23 versus a 3 in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. All right, so that is better. Yeah, so I think this is one of those times where it's like, cool idea, but just like, totally, absolutely not necessary. Like, if we were a normal Breach, like, I, I think my opponent would be very dead. But we are not normal Breach. So, I think we do play Breach for game three, though, even though our opponent has a bunch of sweet cards against us. Actually, I think instead of the Thassa's Oracle, I'll just play the Drawn from Dreams. 
Like, if we start comboing off, we can kill our opponent with Brain Freeze or Grape Shot or Lightning Bolt. We have three con with three win conditions already. I don't think we need a fourth. Probably need to be aware of back to basics, but I'm not gonna like hard try to play around it. Um, ponder's fine, land is okay. I'm not gonna shuffle my library, take that. I guess I fire this off here. Ignoring everything that I just said about basic lands. And getting either a red or a green source to work towards one of the other things that I want to have access to. I think I'm just going to shuffle that. I don't really want that bolt. That's one of those things that I want to mill, not draw. I could just go like land, bolt, you brain freeze you, and start things off. But I don't think that's particularly good. Considering that with another land, I can do the same things, but just better. So I can go off this turn with single force of will or next turn with double force of will. Next turn with double force of will seems sweet. The awkward thing, though, is that if I try to go off next turn and double force a will is not good enough, then I'll have pitched two of my four brain freezes, which is weird. My opponent has so much open mana. Like, it's possible that I should wait even longer since, like, my opponent has no clock. Like, I'll just cast a Lotus Petal so that I don't discard. Yeah, I'd be waiting for Bale. Um, that does not really seem worth a card to me.
So I can mill for 12 here. I don't hate that. Like, it just takes a couple of spots that look like this to get there. I think I just force pitch a horse. And then just we we accept that we're playing a longer grindier game instead of just like trying to instantly kill our opponents. Uh, we did not mill any win conditions there though. Somewhat unfortunately. That sucks. So my opponent has 29 cards remaining. I can never mill more than four with one of these. I don't have any answers to Deafening Silence. I think this is just the point where I concede. Like, I just can't beat hate with this deck. It's, it's just not really possible. Yeah, I uh, I think the writing's on the wall with this one in terms of uh, deck quality. Cool idea, but I don't think we need to get cute with the, like, tier one clearly better than every other deck in the format deck, you know? So, like, no regrets in playing this. It's doing something super cool and fun, but... We're, we're kind of like round after round hitting the same sorts of cards that are stopping us. And they're, they're popular cards. So. I, I think Breach is too highly on everyone's radar for playing even a hybrid Breach deck like this that isn't doing something as powerful as regular Breach isn't worth it. So I will say, like, the math works out super well. Like, the whole 15 for 15 thing is, like, super cool. But... Ugh. I also think, like, the main deck is just, like, a little questionable in the first place, right? Like, you probably don't need the Thassa's Oracle or the Grape Shot in the deck. Like, it could be, like, one more Lightning Bolt plus, like, one other card that actually does something. Like, usually one of Lightning Bolt or Brain Freeze can win you a game. Um, that tends to be pretty universally true. There's weird situations where that's not true. Alright, uh, we are playing against the Esper Vile deck. Our hand doesn't really do anything. <coughs> I guess if my preordain finds breach, I just win. So I, I guess I'll keep it. Um, but it's weird. Bottom that and top the ponder, it's dig. And then pass the turn. All 
Alright, um, there's a breach. I can go for it as soon as right now, I believe. So I go land. There's three things in graveyard for LED, plus pedal, pedal, packed. Put six things in there. Brain freeze. Yeah, we're good. Oh, all right, we win. So junk for blue, blue, blue. Flashback LED, junk, land, land, pedal. Done. Crack for blue, 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 brain freeze, target me. Pay one, exile one, two, three, done. Our opponent won't concede. Because I said his deck was bad and he's very upset about it. JTL has asked me not to talk about how bad his deck is, so I won't do that. I'll leave that to everyone in the chat. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. So, let's look at the latest version of this deck and figure out like which one of these things I want to play against. JTL005. Um, both are going to be a disaster for me because my opponent is playing a very weird combination of cards. So we care about, if we go on the show and tell plan, we care about like Teferi, Venser, Peacekeeper, Wisp, Raisin Borrower. Meddling Mage, once my opponent actually knows what I'm doing. Canonist a bit. Very a bit. <coughs> Whereas if we stay on the Breach plan, we care about Meddling Mage. Recruiters for Meddling Mage. Kind of Venser, kind of Teferi, Force. Relic. 
Thoughtseize, Canonist, Horse. It's probably close. I'm going to board out the Breach stuff. Um, that's 14. What's my 15th? I have the Thassa's Oracle. I do have the Thassa's Oracle. So, oh, it's normally Bolt, but I'll probably keep the Bolt to answer bears and then board in this side. Oh, yeah. Grape Shot and Bolt are probably about as good as Veil. Vale. Actually, let's keep Grape Shot and take out Spell Pierce. So, this is turn to brainstorm, hope to fix this hand, have grape shot for an initial meddling mage if it happens to hit something that I care about. This hand's pretty sketchy. What do you lose for playing Veil? Access to good white cards. <coughs> um, I should consider forcing this vial here. Uh, my opponent's mana base is absolutely atrocious. And if I force this, they might actually not cast cards. Like, there's, there's so many different combination of cards where they don't get to cast some of their multicolored spells. But since my hand is relatively bad, I don't think I can afford to get rid of the Brainstorm. I'm going to let that go. No, I don't think it's insane to paddle Brainstorm Fetch, but I also don't think I need to do so. Like, this game might go slow enough where I'm just pitching pedal. So I'm going to play out a petal, then play island, and then brainstorm. I don't think I'm scared of most things my opponent can play unless I'm getting stream sniped. So I think I'll probably be putting back my Force of Will. And... I 
Then the question is, do I keep the Grape Shot as a removal spell for a bear? I probably do. In which case, I'm putting back a land. Then I'll fetch. Take another island there and preordain. Um, yeah, seems good. So again, I said that I wouldn't crap on JTL's deck. So chat, I leave it to you. Yeah, that's fine. So my opponent has Canonist, so if I cast Show and Tell and I cast Omniscience, they'll violin the Canonist afterwards. <coughs> How many answers does my opponent have to Omniscience? Spencer and Leon and Relic Order, as well as three copies of Recruiter remaining to find them. <coughs> Potentially a Brazen Borrower. I still think I'm supposed to show and tell for omniscience this turn. Now the issue is that in response to show and tell, my opponent will tap this and put it in. So we're not actually going to get a chance to cast anything else. <coughs> so it's interesting, like whether or not like I cast a veil of summer before doing anything else. Doing so plays around counter magic but doesn't like doesn't play around vial. So, like, there's a chance that I should cast Bale of Summer in response here to play around a Force of Will, but I guess if they have that, they just force the initial show-and-tell instead. So I guess that happens. So things can get weird right here. Uh, it's just a Soul Herder. All right, so I can now pass the turn.
So I feel like we're somewhat safe because we have Veil of Summer for like a Brazen Borrower bounce. Okay. Sure. It's weird whether or not like I actually cast the intuition at the end step. Depends on what my opponent recruiters for. So like they're gonna soul herder and either bounce recruiter to get something or bounce baleful strix to draw a card. I want my opponent to just die. I'm thirsty. I want more water. <laughs> okay, they get another soul herder. So that's fine. That's their one spell for this turn. So I can let these Soul Herder triggers resolve safely. And then Intuition. Slightly awkwardly if my opponent happens to draw, f or no, I guess Force of Will is not that big of a deal. <coughs> Any meddling mage, sure. Alright, so stack's empty. Cast with omniscience, target you, get triple emrakul. So that's my one spell for this turn. I'll get another one next turn. Probably more than one in all likelihood. depending on what my opponent does. <coughs> I 
Yeah, I'm fine with the Baleful Strix living. I don't care about that. I'm I'm here to take six permanents out. thing I would personally like to go is the Canonist. No such luck. Yeah, that's all fine. We'll get another one later. So I can just Grape Shot the Baleful Strix right now, or I can just cast a Grizzlebrand. <coughs> Grizzlebrand potentially just finds me another Emrakul and also stops some of the shenanigans on the ground, which is pretty good. If I can take this uh, Ether Sworn Canonist off the table, the Grape Shot gets to do a ton of work. Otherwise, it just gets to do a moderate amount of work by picking off Baleful Strix. I don't need show and tell. I don't need pedal, unfortunately. So I'll just put those back and fetch. What lines do I have? I guess let's just take the forest. Uh, it seems like a an egregious error to blink that canonist and let me have access to multiple spells. Oh, I see. It's not a. It's an instantaneous blink. Never mind. This isn't a blink and then return with a window in between. I take it back. <coughs> oh, pedal plus does clear the canonist. Alright, that's a good point. So that's probably meddling mage on something. I think I just let that happen. Should I kept that pedal? Doing pedal, grape shot, canonist. As of now, what am I doing? Well, I'm taking 14 on the crackback, so it's not like it's insane. Uh, 
Um, actually, I should even like consider whether or not I'm swinging. Because like, there's worlds where they just hold this back for a turn. And then intuition for Emrakul or Lightning Bolt on their turn. Then draw 14 for Grizzlebrand reasons. <coughs> That might just be better than attacking. Right, I would be drawing seven cards with Grizzlebrand on my turn to hit a Lotus Petal to, like, try and Grape Shot a bunch of things. What's my line? So I could Intuition for Lightning Bolt on their turn. Lightning Bolt, Canonist. Then Ponder, Grape Shot, Meddling Mage, and Strix. Yeah, I think I'm supposed to wait. Oh no, I can't Intuition for Lightning Bolt. I have one Lightning Bolt. <coughs> That's interesting, then. I could get Bolt Pedal Pedal, though. Bolt Pedal Pedal is pretty sweet. I think I'm just going to pass and play towards that. This next turn will be my next turn, my last turn to actually do anything. <coughs> yeah, that's fine. is just going to get to draw cards here, so might as well intuition in response. The Ponder is going to build Storm later. or at least has the possibility of building Storm later. Flipped your meddling mage. Put it back on Emrakul. That's fine. <coughs> Alright, um, let's see what we can string together. We're going to cast this with Omniscience.
That sucks. Can't counter back. Um, so I'm not technically dead yet, I guess, but I'm gonna go ahead and concede for clock reasons here. So I'm just waiting a minute here before continuing to sideboard so that my opponent won't know whether or not like I'm going back to the thing that I was doing in game one. And then we'll proceed from there. Opponent's still sideboarding. I'm going to get water. Do you think the deck would be better if you played show and tell and then flipped into breach? Maybe. But honestly, I think the deck would be better if you just played Breach and then sideboarded into Breach. I, I think the white cards in Breach are some of the best cards in Breach. Like the Mentors, the Wear Tears, the Swords, the Postures, the Serenities that are in the sideboard. I think that's where you want to be. So, like, I don't necessarily think that, uh, that this whole approach, like main deck and sideboard together, I don't think this is where you want to be. <coughs> I, I'm expecting no changes in legacy. Legacy. Um, I'll keep this. We ponder looking for a show and tell and just try to flop in. Camera cool, hope it's good enough. Unban Yogmoth's will. <laughs> That's fair. Can't actually see my lens. Too small. Um, two of these three are fine. Sort of interesting what I would do on my turn two here. I think I'd just ponder before playing a land and see what that next card down is. Do, do, do. All 
I don't want to draw through those lotus petals, so I'm going to go ahead and shuffle this. Make a land drop and pass. <coughs> so I'd like to find show and tell a land and a counter spell. That's kind of the ideal. Strong. Resolves. Um, all right. Um, intuition does find show and tell, and there is a force of will. So I'm going to put back a petal and I think just a land here, honestly. <coughs> it's interesting whether or not I actually fetch for another basic or whether I get a non-basic. I don't have anything to talk about here. Like, opponent can play a bear, and I just bolt it. So. Well, now I can definitely safely get basics. So now I intuition for show and tell. Cast show and tell with force pitching omniscience back up. <coughs> yeah, that's fine. Triple show and tell, done. <coughs> oh, um, that's interesting. So, opponent can have a piece of interaction pretty easily, but probably not two. So, show and tell with force pitching omniscience is probably okay. 
and then we just like put in the Emrakul. It's not ideal, but I think it's fine to just go for it. So that seems like a hard cast force of negation. Nice. That all worked out very well. So now I need them not to spike. Uh, I guess exactly Brazen Borrower. I don't care about Baleful Strix. Grape Shot beats that. I get one redraw off of Relic. Yeah, Peacekeeper, I guess, is also interesting, but, like, I'll also have Grape Shot to beat Peacekeeper. It's just, like, literally any spell, and then Peacekeeper dies. Yeah, I guess Petty Theft is in and out. One has eight permanents. I'm going to take out six of them. I'd like to just draw a cantrip to do more damage with this grape shot. <coughs> so their permanent count is actually relevant now. Nice. Bottom that, bottom that. Uh, Grizzlebrand, not great. Okay, so Storm's two. So I guess we kill Giver of Runes and then decide what to do from there. <coughs> So now it's just a question of, do I trade Emrakul for Strix? Like, do I take the 2, 4, 6, do I take the 7 for 1, leave my opponent with a 2, 2, and then have to draw another show and tell? Or do I just wait a turn and get one more card out of it? I think waiting a turn and taking one more card out of it is fine. <coughs> So the issue is that Grave Shot is a sorcery, right? So I lack some ability to do cool things with it. 
I think I just take this trade here. It's a lot of permanence. Like this is a seven for two. Thank you very much for the Twitch Prime support. Very much appreciated. So I forgot that most of our show and tells were in exile, but they're not. It's not like there's much I can do about that. So I need to cantrip towards my remaining show and tell pretty aggressively. Bottom that. Bottom that. Uh, intuition is interesting. <coughs> So because I already intuition for show and tell earlier, um, this poses a problem for me. So I can't intuition for show and tell, I have to intuition for triple cantrip. Well, I'll win in 30 seconds if I win. All I have to do is find show and tell. So we'll take a drawn from dreams, ponder, ponder, done, and we'll get a ponder out of that because there's no way in heck you get me drawn from dreams unless you can present lethal off of vile. So I need to just spike the card because of the Canonist here. Because I need to cast Show and Tell for my creature next turn or I die. That I can cast in case it's relevant. My Storm Count isn't relevant. So I get to cantrip with a veil here. And the question is like, do I fetch? Fetching is marginal thinning. I'm not gonna fetch. Ugh. Womp womp. So, uh, scoreboard for this league makes it uh, pretty clear that this deck is not a winner. <coughs> it's 
This deck's interesting. But, like, I just have no ability to interact with my opponent's stuff. And that's why I've lost most rounds. Like, we're trying to juke our opponent, but we can't actually juke them because the cards that they've brought in for Breach are at least relevant against what I'm doing. And it's just not good. But we'll play out one more. So I don't I don't technically die if I fetch, but I have to put in Grizzlebrand instead of Emrakul. And Andy, I see what you're saying. Okay, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, that was probably better then. I thought they had done it in response to the second one going on the stack, but that is, that is not the case then. No. Yes. So we need artifact mana to go off with this hand, and we have three ponders, which are apparently of different arts. So we'll throw away the art that's different. <coughs> wow. This deck's good. Let's go top. Top, top, shuffle, no. We'll need red mana to start with the breach, but like, our cards are great. Is that how that works? We'll say yes. Alright. So we're gonna have another long one. <coughs> this is not what I thought I was going to get into in streaming this deck tonight. I thought we were going to like get through our games very quickly. So I kind of want a veil. But I don't know that I want to draw through all of those cards. So I'm just gonna go ahead and shuffle here. So red land means that I can go for it with one piece of backup. Man, the situation is slightly awkward because of the mulligan. But I don't really think this is bad. Uh, so that looks like an Ice Bank Waddle trying to hit a land drop. Seems like I am correct. Don't know for 100% sure. Uh, so it seems like I just go for it here. So I put back 
intuition breach. Cast this. I guess cast the LED now. Two active counter spells, Force of Negation gets met with Force of Will, and we win. How many cards are in the graveyard? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, yeah, there's six cards there that I don't care about. One, one, two, three, done. Me, same targets. So we, we have a Grape Shot or a Brain Freeze to kill our opponent with, so they've seen what's up. <coughs> Alright, um... Are we just doing the same old song and dance where, like, we do this thing for Game 2 again? I really think that just, like, the ability to Brain Freeze my opponent out is good. Like, I keep coming back to that for the game threes every time. But... You know. This is funny. Yeah, I think that's the problem. Like, I think we're obligated to try the <coughs> the weird approach for game two because we lack any answers to reasonable hate cards. Do I let it go? I probably don't let it go. I really just want to hit lands here. <coughs> I'm not ready for that yet. I will take that. <coughs> yeah, we basically played against Deafening Silence every round. I don't think I want to like super super telegraph what I have by like playing volcanic and then pondering. That just like screams Veil of Summer so hard.
Yeah, so you remember that thing where we can't actually answer cards that get in play? This sucks. <laughs> Yuck. Well, Pierce and Veil are both pretty much like equally bad. Because we can only cast spells anytime I could cast a sorcery. <coughs> but Veil you can at least cast before a, a show and tell. I am going to need to assemble Omniscience and Emrakul right now due to the Teferi. So it's suboptimal. I'm basically ready to concede this game, but I would like to show my opponent a show and tell first. Main value of the transformational sideboard is to make them board wrong game three. Uh, yeah, sure. We'll go with that. <coughs> so now Teferi's back to three, so again, need omniscience. Uh, I almost don't even want to cast this yet. But I don't think I can just keep sitting here. Man, I wish I had cards with text. All right, yeah. So like, opponent has this locked up, but uh, but I want to show them a show and tell. Like, I want them to see my hand, or something. Even if it's just like me discarding a Grizzlebrand or something. I can also just like hard cast in omissions. So hopefully they're getting looks at my good cards with Jace. They put something on bottom, so it must be good. Man, I wish I had cards with Dex. In my opinion, that's kind of a brave brainstorm. Are we, are we really countering a ponder? It occurs.
So I get exactly this turn to draw show and tell. Hmm. Yeah, so like this is a disaster. <coughs> Yeah, I, I think this deck just, like, the sideboard plan overlaps too much with the main board plan for this to actually be good. Alright, get out, get out, get out. There's 14. We may keep the drawn from dreams. So, like, LEDs in, breaches in, lightning bolt grape shot, brain freeze in, leave Thassa's oracle out. <coughs> Yeah, so Pound probably didn't make any boarding changes, unfortunately. Uh, I'm missing so much from this hand, but I don't think we can throw back the ones that look like this. Like, I'm missing lands. I'm missing both pieces of the combo. But... Like, I have a handful of gas. I guess that's a top top. Alright, your pyroblasts now have text. Shuffle that, try to high roll a little better. <coughs> I think I just pass this turn rather than do anything involving this brainstorm. I think it's just perfectly fine to wait a turn before taking any actions. Get a little deeper, make it less likely that I get locked. Now I think I'm okay with it. It's so like, I might as well just like cycle this other veil since I have two more counter spells in hand. I lose the Lotus Petal to do it, but then like my brainstorm resolves, I get to cantrip with the, or no, I don't get to cantrip with the veils. Uh, that was poor on my end. My bad. So now my counter spells are off. You know, that's how I feel. That's where we're at. I think I think I'm done with this deck. 
We're done. This deck's bad. Normally I play that out, but like, I've been streaming for a while and we're not getting any play points even if we win that match. Um, so, essentially, Breach is the number one targeted deck in the format right now because it's the best deck in the format. So the fact that we're playing a deck that's worse than Breach, but we're still Breach, means that we're taking all the hate on of the format. And this sideboard plan, while different, isn't different enough that we're completely dodging all the hate that's being brought in to defeat this. So I I don't I don't think this is viable. Um, more generally, like looking at the main deck, um, I I think all of the breach decks should be playing white, not green, not black. I, I think just the white splash is absolutely the best splash option. You get Orem's Chant, Silence, um, if you want the split. You get Source of Plowshares, Serenity, Wear Tear in the sideboard, um, as well as Lavinia if you want something for the mirror. Um, I just I just think it's so, so good. Uh, you know, best, best deck in the format. Um, so, that was fun. Let's delete that. Let's not look at that again. Um, can we transform into an Oko deck? Maybe. It might might be better. <coughs> well, I hope you enjoyed that, folks. Um, so I'm going to take a second here and go to my website. Let's publish that. Whoop. All right. So for our stream words for tonight, I just pushed out an article um, that is essentially just a big ol' discussion about DNT and its positioning now versus its positioning in the past and things of that nature. So you can go ahead and take a look at that if you want. Um, I'll post it on social media and all of that momentarily um, once I go ahead and like formally end the stream here. Um, also on the website though, let's take a look at the queue. So for Thursday, I have a Kroxa deck queued up. Um, <coughs> I don't think I actually looked at this deck before. All right, uh, so it looks like we're playing a Dreadnought, Stifle, Kroxa, Lazav, Ashiok, Lily, Bob deck Thursday. Rip my play points. Um, we'll see what we can do with this. Kroxa is actually like interesting enough that I think it's actually like legitimately a legacy contender. So. Like, just casting this on turns two and four in a fair matchup is totally fine to maybe even good. Um, and we'll see how the rest of this stuff goes. It's kind of weird. Well, I, I guess let's let's save this discussion for a little bit later. <coughs> oh yeah, this is definitely maximum spice. Anyway, folks, I hope you enjoyed. If it's your first time here, please consider following. I'm doing legacy content about three days a week. And if you're really enjoying it, consider subscribing to support what I'm doing. And I'm going to go ahead and turn you over to Anurag, who is presumably playing Breach. Torpor Orb does not stop the sacrifice it side, though, which is why people are playing it. 